Okay, buddy, what do you think of Wilkins' coffee? I never tasted it. Now, what do you think of Wilkins? During the late 50s and early 60s, Jim Henson and his team would do various commercials featuring various Muppet characters. As some of these commercials are highly documented and available to watch, while some are barely to known information being close to consider a lost media. So on today's newest Muppet Minute episode, I'll be going over my top 10 favorite early Muppet commercials. Number 10. Wheels, Flutes, and Crowns. This was a 1966 text pilot that was made for the General Food Canada food product. According to Jim Henson's design and doodles, it gives details about the commercials. In 1966, Jim Henson drew three monsters that appeared in the General Food commercial that featured three country snacks, Wheels, Flutes, and Crowns. Each snack was represented by a different monster. The first monster, the Wheel Stealer, was a short, fuzzy monster with wonky eyes and sharply pointed teeth. The Flu Snatcher was a speed demon with a large, sharp nose and wind blowing hair. And the Crown Grabber was a hunk of a monster with a Brunus Cologne accent and teeth that resembles giant knitting needles. These monsters had the incendable appetite for the stack foods that were named after. Each time the Muppet narrator, a human looking fellow, would fix a plate of these delicious snacks, they would disappear before he starts eating them. The narrator would warn viewers that these perky monsters could be disguised as someone in your home, at which the monster would briefly turn into people and then dissolve back into monsters. As it turned out, the test pilot wasn't aired, but the three Muppet monsters would have future casts in the Muppet universe. The Crown Grabber was using the skits on the Ed Sullivan show as he was trying to ruin a girl's beautiful day, which this monster is known as the Beautiful Day Monster, as he would feature in a few numbers on the early years of Sesame Street before finding his permanent home on the Muppet show. The Flu Snatcher was using various interests in the first season of Sesame Street around 1970. He was turning to a background monster in the Great Santa Claus Switch. And in 1984, he featured in the Muppets Take Manhattan wedding scene as one of the wedding guests sitting at the end of the fourth row on the bride's side. However, for the wheel stealer, he was destined for greater things which I'll discuss later on, so don't you worry. Ladies and gentlemen, the new spokesman for Wilson's Certified Meats, Scoop and Skip. Greetings. Hi there, all you hotshot Wilson's Meat Sales type people. We're about to show you the new specially designed Wilson's Meat television campaign. You mean all those crummy commercials we knocked together last... But first, we'd like to tell you about our organization. What organization? Muppets Incorporated, of course. Oh, you're not going to tell them the truth, are you? I'm going to explain about Muppets' meteoric rise in fame in both the world of entertainment and the field of commercials. Okay, just so you don't tell them the truth. Number 9. Wilson's Meat. This was produced by Muppets Inc. as 24 commercials, which features two Muppet characters, Scoop and Skip. As in most Muppet Buddies commercials, one character favored the product, while the other one didn't like it. Unlike previous ads, the characters' interests in the products verify from ad to ad, though there's not much information about this as two meeting films were also produced explaining how the Wilson's commercials are made. Number 8. CMP Telephone Company uh, VA. This commercial has to little no information as well as these are 11 10 second ads for the phone companies in Virginia that air from 1965 to 1968. The ads for Virginia market started Mac and Susie, who made similar sets as for the Southern Bell Telephone in 1966. Occasionally, Scoof fill in in the latter as Snego in one ad. Number 7. Munchos. So remember how at the beginning of this video I was talking about the wheel stealer as he was destined for greater things after his field commercial? Well, let's get back and see what he's been up to. 
Around 1967, Henson used the wheel sealer puppet for an IBM training film called The Copy Break Machine. I won't go into further details about it, I'll try to discuss that in another video later on in the future. But around two years later, a similar looking Muppet monster named Arno was used for three commercials selling munchos, which is basically a filet lay potato chip. So after the three commercials were produced, Henson had the opportunity to renew the contract, which he chose not to. Why was that? Because at this point, he was working on Sesame Street, and if you have been keeping track with this monster puppet, he would premiere on season 1 to early season 2, as he would literally eat anything. As later on into season 2, this lovable shaggy blue monster will be better known as the Cookie Monster. Now, while I'm on the subject with Sesame Street, here's a little fun fact, and I have mentioned this with the other two. During the early years of Sesame Street, some of the various Muppet monsters would appear in various skits. Which, in all honesty, the first few years of Sesame Street is just so weird. Just watch some of the early episodes on your free time, and you will thank me later. I tell you, Ralph. There's only one answer to this dog food problem, asparagus. Tender, succulent asparagus. Well, that may be alright for you, Baskerville, but I like Purina Dog Chow. Number 6, Purina Dog Chow. This might scratch a few heads, so just bear with me with your bones. Before he was the Muppets pianoist player, Ralph the Dog was first used as a commercial star for Purina Dog Chow, as he would be with his sidekick, a Basker the Hound. According to the Jim Henson the biography, Bernie Bilstein later recalled it though, he was never certain if the offer came from Perina or other kinds, that Jim was offered it a hundred thousand dollars for the company to own Ross outright. Bernstein nearly leaped the offer but Jim immediately squashed the deal. Then Bernstein warned Jim to never sell anything I own. As four commercials are featured as bonus on the Muppet Show Season 3 DVD set. Overall, seven spots were produced, three 16, 60 second ads, and four produced IDs. But even though the commercial didn't go well, Ralph found stardom in 1963 on the Jimmy Dean Show. As Bachelor Boom became a generic background character with no character development, unlike Ralph. <laughs> Your deduction on the face of the evidence brings us to the only possible conclusion, and that is that the butler did it. But, but Holmes, there is no evidence, so your logic is wrong. Uh, logic is never wrong, Watson. If there is no evidence that the butler did it, and I certainly didn't do it, then the inescapable conclusion, Watson, yes, yes. is that you're the murderer. <laughs> As a little fun fact, during the first Sesame Street movie, Fall That Bird, Big Bird stops his tourist from Oceanville, Illinois at a Purina Chow plant. Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, more spectacular than a rocket launch, wilder than science fiction, sexier than Playboy, able to leap tall buildings, in a single bound. What is it? It is me, the LaChoy Dragon. How about that? Huh? Number 5, LaChoy Chow Main. This 11 series commercial was produced from 1965 to 1967, starring the Doer LaChoy Dragon. The commercial will have 6 60 seconds commercials, 5 20 seconds commercials, and 5 and a half minutes presentation reel. There were two commercials filmed. One was a hand puppet of Delbert with, with interact in the studio with Mark, a Timbit Muppet in a suit, as everything Cook would be set into Dragon Fire, which in some cases would literally set the family studio on fire, as another commercial would feature Delbert as a full body Muppet, which she was one of the first earliest full body characters. Plus, with the five in the half minute presentation, Ralph the Dog would make a short cameo. You all know of the Muppets work on ABC's The Jimmy Dean Show. 
It was for this show that they first created the internationally famous puppet dog, Ralph. Howdy. Was that him? Yup. Howdy. Is that all he says? He's a star any more than we have to pay him. Howdy. He agreed to stop by and say howdy. Howdy. He does it very well. Howdy. <clears throat> Number four. SK Meats. This was the first ever Muppet commercial, as this was the original sponsor of Sam and Friends, as this would premiere in the beginning and the end of each episode from 1955 through 1961. The relationship between Henson and SK continued throughout the 60s, with human spokesman Pat McKenzie co-starring with the Muppets. Overall, more than 30 SK spots were produced between 1959 and 1963. Number 3. Southern Spread This commercial was thought to be the first example of the Muppets filming on location. 16 commercials were produced between 1965 and 1966, as only 3 surfaced online. As the commercial will open up with the Southern Colonel, who would say he will do anything for Southern's bread, which he would perceive in performing in this stream act such as jumping out a window, breaking the sound barriers, or going to the Yankee Stadium. Number 2. Ideals Toys Around 1966, Ideals Toy produced the first licenses hand puppet of Kermit and Rolph, and both of these puppets are quite scarce. The Rolf puppet has a hole in its back for performing, as unlike the real Rolf, the Ideal puppet has a felt tongue and tail. The Kermit depicts in its mid-60s designs with a sleeveless red sweater and rounded feet instead of flippers. He has also has a hole in his back for performing along with a metal rod for moving his arms from the inside. Plus, although Kermit was not fully becoming a frog at this time, some products describe him as a frog. Just don't be confused, Kermit wasn't a frog in the beginning as he was a abstract lizard type thing during Sam and Friends as he wasn't called a frog until the late 60s. There was also a snore puppet but those for whatever reason wasn't sold. Jim Henson created a 90 second television commercial ad and he brought out the same arctic comedy that he was using during his advertise to sell other people's products of his own. Oh buy us, oh buy us, oh buy us we beg, for if you don't buy us we'll bite you in the leg. Now oh, hold on, what kind of an attitude is that? <laughs> So buy us at once a bundle of charms. And if you don't buy us, we'll break both your arms. Okay, that's enough. Friends, buy the ideal Muppets. The kids will be screaming for them. We have finally niche number one, and that's Wilkins Coffee. Whenever you think of an early Muppets commercial, this will come to mind. It features Wilkins, who loves the copy, and Wonkins, who hates the copy, to which he will often suffer the consequences. As 179 commercials were made, as the ads were so successful and well liked it, that they sparked a series of remakes for companies and the other local markets during throughout the 60s. Well guys, that is the end of this video. If you guys enjoy today's newest Muppet episode, make sure you like and subscribe for more. And let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see in the next episode. I know some of these commercials were kind of explained a bit short and sweet. Because as I say in the beginning, some of them are well documented and less known to information. I had done a video about this years ago when this was the original OG channel. But I reworked some stuff around and all. But... Again, I hope you guys still enjoy. Let me know in the comments below what is your favorite Muppet commercial that I have mentioned or didn't mention it. And let me know what you guys like to see next for the next upcoming Muppet Minute episode. Until then, we'll see you all in the next one.